mixes and mids. We're going to do it from a pictorial standpoint to begin with so that you conceptually understand what's going on. All right, so let's Random polynomial function, we're going to call this f of x. I want to clearly define all these points. So who knows? We're going to say this one's like negative 3, 3. We're going to say this one is negative 1, negative 2. We're going to say this one is four, five. We're going to say this one is six, two. And we're going to say this one is eight, seven. Okay, so I just randomly made up some points that hopefully make sense. Eight, so yeah, they all make sense. All right, we can have local max and mins, all right, which are basically on the, I'm going to say inside of the function, all right, and then we're going to have absolute maxes and mins, which can be on the inside, but can also be on the end points. All right, and this one, I have a, a half open interval. All right, this function is defined on the interval from negative infinity to eight. All right, this is a half open interval, half open interval. All right, and I've just defined this function on a half open interval, okay? Negative infinity goes forever and ever in here, and then it closes up here, okay? Half open interval. Okay, so. My local maxes and mins are on the inside of the function. All right, so think of this as being an edge of my function and kind of infinity down here being an edge. So when I look at the inside, I'm just looking at, at basically these four points in here. Okay, now inside there, I should be able to find some local maxes and mins. All right, so let's see if I can go to a different color here. All right, so this would be a local max or min. What do you think? max because it's up high, right? All right, so this is a local max. All right, this point over here, it's a high, it's a peak, right? So this is a local max. All right, this down here, since it comes down the bottom, it's a valley. All right, so this was a local min. All right, and this is a local min. All right, now, This point out here is an endpoint. All right. Now, my absolute could have been on the inside, but because this endpoint is clearly the highest point of the function, it's absolute. It's the absolute highest. All right. So this one is the absolute max because that's the highest point that this portion of this graph ever reaches. Okay. And notice it is a point, it's an ordered pair. All right. Now, how far down does this go? Infinity, right? So the absolute min is not an ordered pair like all of these have been. It's just going to be negative infinity, all right? So your absolute max or min, if it has arrows on the ends of grass, could be negative infinity or could be positive infinity. All right, now, so far, what I've been doing is we've just been looking at this as like, okay, here's our local max, all right, a local max at negative 3, 3. Okay, and it's the ordered pair. If you go on into college and you take a calculus class, you're going to list your extrema 
is another fancy math word for it, for your local maxes and mins, your absolute maxes and mins, you'll list them as ordered pairs. All right, however, sometimes in some pre-calc books, they take a distinguishing look at them. Okay, so let's take a look at, since I circled that one, let's deal with this one. Okay, so right there in Math Excel, we'll do this as well. All right, I can say that I have a local max located at x equals negative three because we locate points on the graph left to right. Okay, so that local max is located at x equals negative three. The local max, that local max, all right, that local max has a, and I'm just going to use the word value of three. That tells me how high that local max went. This is the y value, this is the x value. So yeah, we can say we got a local max at negative three, three. That's straightforward, simple way to do it. But I also can separate that ordered pair and distinguish what those numbers mean. It's located at my x value, so it's at negative three. That tells the person, oh, I gotta go to the left to negative three. And then when I tell you the value of it is three, oh, well, that's how high it is. The y is considered how high the, it goes. So you will see questions in Math Excel that distinguish between the two of these, all right? And then other questions in Math Excel will want you to enter the ordered pair. Read the directions because they will very clearly tell you the difference. The, I mean, if you read the directions, what's in blue, and you read what the question is asking for, you can tell the difference between that. All right, now obviously when I drew this polynomial curve, all right, and I just randomly placed numbers on here, I made them all nice like four, five, negative three, three, right? Okay, now how often is that gonna happen when you graph a random great big long polynomial? It's not, okay? So this is tomorrow, you're gonna watch a, a, one of the TI-84 graphing calculator videos and you're, you're gonna learn how to find these values and they could be decimals. That could be negative 3.1456. And then the y value could be 8.6, you know, 3.86.45, whatever. They're going to be long decimals. They're not going to be integers when you enter them in <clears throat> Math Excel. Okay. And so the only way I would be able to find decimals is if I use the calculator. I got to use the technology to get that. Okay. So this is kind of extra. There are no notes. Uh, right now on maxes and mins. If you watch, like I don't even know what section, we're in section 1-3. I can add some extra additional notes either. I probably will put them in, in Google Classroom. All right, so watch Google Classroom. I'll put them in there. All right, for some additional notes on this type of stuff because I'll just pull the stuff from the honors pre calc class and then I'll put it out there for you guys. All right, uh, let's see, it's 240.